Hello, people of YouTube. This is Gray's Guitars. I am Steve Gray, and this is going to be a video all about guitar pedals. Uh, probably more towards beginners, uh, but intermediate, higher end, you know, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different types of guitar pedals. The thing to know about guitar pedals is there's a million different brands, they do a million different things, uh, and there's a million different price ranges, anywhere from the lowest I found, which is typically around $20, all the way up to several hundred and everywhere in between. Uh, but if you're brand new to pedals, uh, or if you're just on a budget and you need to make a pedal board, throw something together real quick for your gig, uh, a good place to start, two places I would say, are Behringer, because you can pretty much get any, any type of effect you want for about 30 bucks, it's gonna sound fairly good, uh, or Amazon, because Amazon has a bunch of random things from China that are fairly cheap, uh, and, you know, if you need four or five pedals, usually you can get away with making an entire pedal board for, like, around 100 bucks or so. Uh, sometimes the pedals are on sale, too. So sometimes you get lucky. Some of these Behringer pedals will be on sale uh, for, like, 20 bucks a pop. And somehow they're making money. Uh, ultimately, though, the construction of a pedal is the same. There's some sort of housing, whether it be metal or plastic. Uh, there is a computer chip inside of it. Uh, there are diodes and capacitors and wires, several potentiometers, uh, an LED light, and a switch. And that's basically all there is to it. They are not very expensive to make if you know how to make them. Um, the buying the parts, you know, you can typically buy parts for almost any pedal you want uh, for under $50. So, I mean, yes, it can, it can get a little expensive depending on what level you want to go, but... Um, you also got to factor in labor, you know, depending on where the labor is done. Obviously, labor in China, significantly cheaper than labor in the U.S., so they can charge significantly cheaper for a pedal. However, when something like the Behringer uh, TO-800 is using the exact same chip <coughs> as the Ibanez uh, 808, then maybe if you really want the branding and the original one, sure, I can understand justifying spending the money. But uh, if you're just looking for the sound and you're, yet again, you know, you're on a little bit of a tighter budget, uh, go with Behringer. Behringer makes really good stuff. I've had a few of their pedals in the past. They work. Uh, I did successfully break one. Uh, this was before my YouTube career. The first pedal I believe I ever owned was a that, the Vintage Tube Overdrive. Um, and I am a large man. And... Um, I don't know if I fell on it or I put all of my weight on it or what happened, but I remember uh, I didn't actually break the pedal, but I broke the hinge. Uh, so basically this part of the pedal is just a cover, uh, and with uh, 200, pl 200 plus pounds of man uh, dumping all of his weight on it, uh, it broke the top cover off, broke the screws, uh, bent some plastic, etc. These are all plastic housings, so if you don't like plastic housings, maybe stay away from Behringer. That's, that's what I'm saying. If you like the metal, uh, but at the same time, with the price of them, I know people that have had a Behringer pedal for 30 years, and they don't gig with it, though, in retrospect, but um, they never had any problems with it. Uh, if we go over to Amazon, you just type in guitar pedals, you're going to get all sorts of random brands. Like, here's Boss. You know, Boss is a very good brand. We'll talk about them momentarily. But then you get something like this. 30 bucks, 40 bucks. See, oh, look, Behringer's on there as well. Uh, you can get some cheap cables. Uh, here's another pedal. Uh, Spirit Water Reverb, sure. You just look at the effects. Basically, you put in whatever effect you're looking for. 30 bucks, 22, 23, 21. Um, that is a very weird distorted image uh, of the heavy distortion pedal. Uh, yep, here's one for under 20. You know, uh, Kimmies, K-M-I-S-E. Probably not saying that right. But um, if you just want, as I said, if you don't want to blow a lot of money, you want to learn what effects you want, a good way to do this is Behringer or Amazon and see if you like that effect, because some of the cheaper effects aren't going to sound as good as the expensive ones, um, but then you know what it does. So you can, you know, you can learn the difference between a phaser and a flanger. I don't even know if I know the difference, you know, reverb versus delay, um, an overdrive versus distortion, things along those lines, you know, a wah pedal, um, which I would, that, that may be something I'd recommend buying too. Uh, for one of your first pedals. That is a common pedal used-wise, too. Uh, if you're looking to save some money, definitely search the used market uh, because you can get typically get a Crybaby Wah, the basic version, not one of the fancier ones because there's like a million different versions of the Crybaby Wah, uh, for somewhere around 50 to 60 bucks. And you might have to pay shipping. And they're like $100 new, um, so that is an option, too. 
what I would call the go-to pedal company slash intermediate pedal pricing. You know, sometimes they're expensive. They do go up to $200, but, you know, you can get a DS1 distortion for $62. Bucks, so, not complain. Sorry, DS1, not DS2. There is a DS2, multiple different versions. But uh, not complaining about that. 60 bucks for a pedal seems fairly reasonable. Metal housing, good quality, not going to break on you. That is definitely an option. And Boss has made every type of pedal under the sun. Loop stations, amp and cabinet, uh, blues driver, distortion, digital delay, reverb, chorus, super overdrive, super chorus, heavy metal, tremolo, noise suppressor, synthesizer, <laughs> harmonist, another noise suppressor, booster preamp, dimension C, whatever the heck that is, uh, metal zone, everybody knows, digital delay, delay, flanger. So... Uh, if you're starting to spend a little bit, you got a little bit more money in your pocket, you want something a little better quality than the Behringer, uh, well, I would say significantly better quality, uh, shell-wise, because the shell, you know, the outer shell of a Behringer is plastic, where these are metal. Um, I like metal better, a lot of people do. Most guitar pedals have a metal housing, even the cheap Amazon ones, uh, I think have a metal housing. Yeah, that looks like metal to me. So that is another option, too. Uh, another good brand that is, uh, what I would call kind of mid to upper tier also TC Electronics. Uh, they, I have a Hall of Fame Reverb, the original one. Very good. Never really had any issues with it. Um, I bought it used. I do wish I had the original box, so I have been kind of hunting for another used one with the original box because I'm a little bit of a collector too. Uh, so I like everything in its original packaging. I like to keep it as good condition as I can get it. But uh, they have a whole bunch of different effects too. Same thing. It's going to be similar effects. You know, you got your Ditto. I think that's like your Looper pedal. Uh, reverb gives you a bunch of different reverbs. Uh, Sentry, which is a noise gate. It tells you, too. Flashback delay. Obviously, it's going to be a delay pedal. Oh, this is also and a looper pedal, which is also fun. And they have these bigger housings that do different things. There is multi-effects units, uh, which we will get into that momentarily. Those can save you a bit of money, but they may not also be the sound that you are looking for. Uh, the next company is Dunlop slash MXR slash Crybaby. They're all kind of under the same thing. Uh, MXR makes a lot of good pedals too, but they can definitely start to get on a little bit pricey side, as you can see by these prices. You don't see a whole lot under $100. So this may be something where maybe not exactly your price range. You know, I, I would say average price of a pedal uh, usually a hundred dollars somewhere around a hundred bucks you know maybe 50 it, it ultimately depends on the type of pedal you're buying the company you're getting it from what it does how many crazy features it has but uh mxr as you know they're they're known for they are their phase 90 that is that is one of the things um you can also look at the crybaby since we're over here and i did not realize there were so many friggin options for the crybaby wow there's a Fuzz Wah, there's a Chandler Crybaby Wah, there's a Junior Wah Special Edition White, uh, there's a Wild, Zach Wild, I think that's his Crybaby, uh, Akira Tasaki, not sure who that is, Erie Cantrell, oh, Jerry Cantrell, I got cut off there, uh, Junior Wah Special, there's also different sizes, so you don't, if you don't want the Giant Wah, they make a Mini Wah now, Kurt Hammett, uh, Leo, let's see, Custom Badass Dual Inductor Edition, uh, Crybaby Junior Wah, uh, Crybaby Q-Zone Fixed Wah. This one is, you know, you don't have to actually move the pedal up and down, so that may be something. Uh, here's a Mini Wah, Dime Bag, Gary, yeah. So so basically, I'm not going to go through all of these. But let's see if I can find the regular one. <laughs> well, the, the OG, I would say. Crybaby Standard Wah. There you go, 100 bucks. But as I said, used market, you can definitely find this thing uh, for significantly less expensive. So if you don't want to spend $100 new, you can probably spend about $50 used because everybody has bought a Crybaby Wah pedal or some type of Wah pedal, I would say. Uh, and there is a lot of them on a used market. So um, some people use them, some people don't. You know, it depends on what you're doing, what songs you want to do. But uh, that is an option. Another very good company, Electro Harmonics. They have been around forever as well. Uh, and their price range is also, I think, the cheaper end is like 50 60 but usually you see their stuff around $100. Um, they got a whole bunch of mini pedals, looks like, right now. I have the Neo clone from them, uh, which is kind of similar to the small clone, but a smaller version of it. You know, they have, uh, obviously, the Big Muff is going to be, they have a limited edition Big Muff for $250. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find the... Um, Let's see, disc oh, they have discontinued sale. Let's see, uh, let's see, Big Muffs, Distortion and Gain, maybe? 
I want to find the regular Big Muff, which I'm hoping is somewhere in here. Yeah, this is getting expensive. That has, oh, that's plug-in though. So that, that's a little bit. Nano Muff, 80 bucks. There's, yeah, there's a whole, Triangular Big Muff, Green Russian. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of different versions of everything too. So, I mean, this is the same thing. Tried and true company, been around forever. If you don't like the giant OG housing of when they first started making these things, I think it was in the 70s, I want to say. You can definitely correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But uh, they make smaller versions of everything now. So that way it will, I promise you, you can find something that is in this size, more of a standard size, that will fit on your pedal board. Um, let's see here. Do we have chorus pedals? Let's see. Preamp, delay, distortion, dynamic, filter, and wah, looper, modular, multi-effect. Pitch shifting? Maybe pitch shifting? Would that be considered a chorus pedal? What if I just type in chorus? C-H-O-R-U-S. See what comes up with that. Bass clone, memory man. There we go. That's what I have. So I, ha I have it. There's a neo clone and a nano clone. A lot of people hate the nano clone. I'll be honest. The small clone is the original. Uh, the neo clone, they say, is the smaller version of the small clone. Uh, but for some reason, everybody just hates on the nano clone, which is probably why you see it for forty-five dollars on sale, uh, because they're just trying to get rid of them. <clears throat> so that's up to you. Some people like the Nano Clone. I've never played the Nano Clone, but I, I kind of bought into the, oh, don't buy the Nano Clone when I was looking through the videos. So uh, I kind of moved on there. Um, now, going to multi-effects. So this is just one example of multi-effects unit. This is the newest multi-effects unit from Boss. I believe this is the ME90. Uh, so this is something that has a whole bunch of pedals in one thing. So it's not individualized. You can't pick specific brands. You know, it's basically... All, all or nothing, uh, and this will run you, typically these run you like $300, a couple, at least a couple hundred bucks. On the used market, you know, they have different versions, older versions, the ME70, ME80, um, Line 6 has stuff, uh, there's, whole, you know, just basically Google multi-pedal effects guitar unit, and this is kind of, you plug it in, you're done, this, would, this is something where if you're gigging, and you don't want to be, you know, annoyed by the hassle, you put this in a bag, you're done, you don't have to worry about pedals falling off the board, uh, getting a daisy chain, uh, getting an isolator, you know, power supply, any, any of that stuff. This is just kind of everything in one shot, but, you know, it's all boss. So you may not like specific effects from boss, and that may, you know, kind of lean you away from it. Uh, but if you want to try everything in one shot, this may be your best bet. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, because I don't want to try to drag this video out too long for you, um, although I would say useful information, is you got boutique builders. So one of the most noted boutique builders is JHS, uh, and two pedals I would like to own by them, but haven't just, you know, pulled out the old wallet to spend $500 on two pedals is the Bonsai, which is like a whole bunch of uh, uh, distortions, not distortions, overdrives rather than one, and then the Pat Rack, which is a whole bunch of different, uh, dis that is distortions, rat distortions in one. Uh, and then they just have a whole bunch of boutique stuff. Uh, the cheaper series, if I can find it, is the Series 3, which um, they sound good. I made multiple videos on the Series 3 pedals, as some of you have know. I got no issues with the sound. I just don't like the aesthetic, because if it's something where I buy three or four of these, um, I could see myself getting, as you know, if you're in a dark area, you could see yourself getting a little bit confused because it's the same exact housing for every single one. Yes, it says, you know, you got reverb, screamer, overdrive, octave reverb, all that on them. They're 100 bucks a pop. Sometimes they're on sale for 80 so watch out if you want to get them. But um, I just don't like the color. I don't like how they're all the same color. You know, I, I would have preferred if we got a different color. You know, kind of like Boss does. You get a different color for each one. A little bit less confusing. But if you only have one or two of these on your pedal board and they're kind of separated, as opposed to buying the whole shebang, then you're not really going to have a problem. But uh, you can get a lot of these effects for cheaper. That was my thing. I mean, pretty much with a lot of them, you know, Behringer is going to be the cheapest, Amazon is going to be the cheapest, and a lot of these things probably sound exactly the same um, because they're using the same exact chip, ultimately. Chips are not, as I said, chips, components, usually not super expensive, but you got to have the labor. You know, this these ones are built in the USA, uh, so that may be something you want to think about, too. Uh, another uh, place is Poison Noises, also boutique. Uh, most of his stuff is expensive, so his most famous pedal is the Crook. Um, if you are wondering, that is like his crazy overdrive pedal. whole bunch of different knobs on that boy. He has a bunch of different versions of it. 
uh, but he's got a whole bunch of different things and yet again these are going to be expensive these are not they're, it's a boutique pedal brand that's what they call themselves uh so you're not going to find something typically under a hundred dollars um if you do i mean i think he's got like one pedal all you can eat yeah there's a, there's a whole one thing you can get um for this all you can eat buffer is oh it's a buffer okay but there's no way to adjust nothing but um yeah so it can get expensive so as, as i said in terms of pedals, if you're brand new, start on the cheaper end, learn what you like. If you if you got the money to go up to Boutique, sure, by all means, your money, do whatever you want with it. I say that in a lot of my videos now. It's your money. I can't control how you spend it, ultimately. But uh, Behringer's a good place to start. Boss, I mean, they're kind of, the, I would say Boss is the standard for pretty much everything. Uh, TC Electronics, Electro Harmonics, uh, Dunlop, MXR. Um, the, the only thing, I mean, maybe if, if you're kind of cautious, maybe stay away from the Amazon pedals because they haven't been around a lot. You know, these random cheap Amazon pedals, they haven't been around super long. And I don't know how these things hold up because I've never personally owned one. Maybe I need to buy one of these things, uh, and just play it every day for, for like a year and see if it's still equally as good or equally as bad, <laughs> I should say the first day as it is the last day, and see how these things hold up. I can I can spend 20 bucks on, on a pedal. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> but uh, maybe you don't even want to buy pedals. Some people are fine just plugging into the amp, but these gives you they give you a whole bunch of different sounds, and you have essentially limitless options, I would say. But uh, if you're new or you're on a budget, whatever the case may be, start on the cheaper end. Learn what effects you like, and then as you get the money, go higher. And then also... The used market is fantastic. A lot of these boutique pedals, Boss pedals, TC Electronics, sometimes you can find them even locally for half the price they are new. So that is an option too, is look for them on your Facebook marketplace, look for them on eBay. Uh, Reverb, you don't really find too much of a deal, maybe, you know, 10%, 10 20% off, sometimes 30%, depends on the condition of the pedal. Um, but that is an option too, is shop around used. I have bought used pedals before. Uh, you test them. Oh, just test them first. That's all you can do is uh, hopefully the reverb or eBay seller, if you do go in that route, is honest with you. Um, or if you're doing local, you know, just test them out first, make sure all the functions work, and then go from there. But uh, yeah, this has been a video all about guitar pedals. I hope it helped some of you. Uh, I'm sure some of you are going to give me some hate for the JJ stuff in the comments, as you always do. But uh, just bring it on. Go ahead. Have that. Just d d roast me in the comments. I don't even care. It's pro YouTube's probably going to block half of them anyway. Try to, stay, try to stay away from swear words. I'll say that. Typically, YouTube doesn't block the comments if you're not swearing at me. So uh, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell, like, share, all that fun stuff. And as always, have a good one.